visual overview that's adding a powerful graphical layer on top of your data miner system. In this module, we will take a look on the possibilities, not yet on creating those drawings because that's done with Microsoft Visio and that's covered in the creating uh, Visio files module. So in this session, we'll focus on browsing and looking around a little bit, you could say. Okay, so visual overview, uh, very short. We're just gonna have a small introduction, taking a look at some features and some then, then some examples. And of course, taking a look in our system as well with a little bit of a demo. So first of all, the visual overview, that's a very powerful module because it really adds that uh, way of navigating in your system in a graphical way. Every object in your data miner system can also have a graphical presentation. So if it's a view, a service or an element, you can always give it that more meaningful graphical presentation so that you can easily find your way and navigate further to other items, you could say. So you can see already a couple of cards which are open on the screenshot here, uh, whether it's more a, a block diagram, a diagram um, or like over there, or a world map, or if you go into one specific device with some key metrics that are being shown, maybe some trend graphs, some dynamics, there's a lot of possibilities you can do with that. And in this session, we'll take a closer look at some of those uh, possible features there. Be aware that uh, with every card, you have basically the, the visual and the data or the content and the details and the alarms that we uh, are going to talk about in other modules. So we are mainly talking about that visual tab page that is always available uh, on a view element or service. You can of course open it up and uh, see the visual next to the icon as well. So um, you can uh, do, of course, uh, navigation within your uh, visual overviews. So if you have a world map, you can drill down onto a specific continent. Uh, you can drill down into a specific site, maybe have a floor plan, go to a rack layout, uh, go to the uh, certain elements in that rack, uh, or more go to a block diagram uh, where you go further into the elements. So it really helps you out to navigate and find your way in your system in a graphical manner, you could say. Now, um, to talk about a couple of features that I want to highlight, uh, and then we'll also give you some examples. Um, first of all, uh, let's maybe take a quick look at that uh, navigation uh, breadcrumbs bar we have at the, bot at, at the top. Um, so, um, first of all, you do have a back button there. The forward button is available, but it is behind the hamburger menu. So, if you click on the hamburger menu, you also have the forward there available. So the breadcrumbs really shows me like, okay, I'm currently looking at a specific view. You immediately see all the items that are uh, the parent uh, or on top of that uh, site or view so that you can immediately see also what is happening uh, on top there as well. So while maybe my view that I'm working in uh, might be perfectly okay, I can see that a higher level might suddenly have an alarm. You can click on any of the items or names uh, views in there to immediately go to that specific uh, view. But you can also use the triangle or arrow in between the items to go to another uh, subsite. Um, and there's also something special that I want to mention there. So let's maybe take a look at that. Um, let's say that uh, I go to uh, London, for instance you will immediately see that I can also see, or maybe the Euro devices. So while this one is green, I can see, oh, there's a problem in London. So I can immediately go to London as well. Um, you can immediately ju jump to Europe because maybe you want to go to another uh, city. Uh, but you can also, instead of first going to Europe and then choose your city, uh, click on the small arrow in between Europe and London. That allows you to open it up and immediately see Paris, for instance, and I can see uh, the different uh, earth stations I have there, and I can go for uh, an, another uh, subsite. But maybe I want to open up uh, not one of the lower level sites, but maybe I want to open up the Tor 22 here. Well, if I just click on it, it opens up the sub menu, which is already open. Uh, you need to double click on it. So if I double click on this one, it will open up the Tor 22. Of course, if I uh, want to go back uh, to London, I can just go 
back to London like this, or maybe the Euro devices, or maybe an element uh, in there, double clicking and opens up that item again. Or I could have used the back as well, of course. So that's uh, something I wanted to mention, of course. Um, the uh, breadcrumbs, whether you want to show that yes or no, that is actually user setting. So if it's not visible, uh, you can activate it or vice versa in your user settings. Now, next to the breadcrumbs, we will notice that some of the drawings, depending on the how it has been designed, might have different tab pages. Those different tab pages allow you to visualize a different angle of the same view. Um, maybe you have more like a rack layout, more like a flow uh, diagram, or maybe a map. Uh, in this case, we have some sessions and a reports and an admin. So you might have different uh, angles on a specific um, physio drawing. Um, every tab page might even have sub uh, tab pages or child tab pages. So you can uh, even uh, underneath the overview still then have a map list and logical uh, sub, sub view uh, as well. So you can have quite some uh, different pages there. Now, um, I can show you in an example as well. So if there are no tab pages, then you don't see anything. Um, I do have, for instance, on my DCP DMA, the linking shapes. I know that this one has quite a lot of them. So you can see uh, linking has a lot of sub pages. Uh, data has a lot of sub pages positioning. Uh, I'll come back to that uh, drawing uh, later on as well. Okay, um, now, of course, the content of your drawing, that is all defined by the person creating uh, the visual overview. Um, it is, as I mentioned, created in Microsoft Visio. We're going to see that in another module, how to create that. But in Microsoft Visio, you can really create any kind of graphical uh, presentation. So you really have a powerful professional uh, tool available to be able to create any kind of um, drawing in there. Of course, the drawings, we want to link certain items of that uh, overview or schematical overview or drawing that I created to objects of the data miner system. Because I want to make it a little bit dynamic and I want to visualize uh, the alarms or dynamic behavior in there, uh, a first basic uh, link is of course to an element. Uh, you can link to an element and visualize, like in this case, a specific device. Immediately it will be color coded uh, so that you can see the alarm state of that, uh, of that specific element. And you can also, as uh, the designer of the drawing, choose to specify certain um, items in there, like uh, showing the name or showing some real time parameters in there, like the LMP state or the audio output level. And once it is linked, it has the color coding and immediately it has the default right click menu to open up this device uh, or element or to sta state, uh, change the state, active past stopped, masking it. Um, and we can even extend the right click menu here on the graphical uh, interface with additional items so that I can immediately change certain parameters, like in this case, the LMB1 supply and the uh, audio output gain, so that I don't need to open up the element, find the parameter inside the element to, do, to be able to do the change. So I can immediately make it available in the right click menu. You can actually make it available inside the drawing as well. So that right click menu is the default menu that we uh, always see when right clicking somewhere on an element. So linking to an element, it's of course a very important one, um, but sometimes you want to add a little bit of dynamic behavior to show uh, like in more like in a flow diagram, if we're following the main path or if we are going to a, towards a backup uh, element, uh, yes or no. So we can add some dynamics and there are a couple of examples here, like for instance, a baseball switch that rotates. So we can do a rotate action or uh, a triangle that here flips around. So we can do a flips, uh, flip around the X or the Y axis, or maybe the visio drawing has a line which closes and which opens uh, this switch here. We can uh, actually, depending on a certain um, parameter, 
sh uh, decide if we are showing one or the other. So that's a show height we can do uh, in there as well. So that really allows you to make it dynamic and to uh, really show where the signal flows inside your system. Of course, we can link to many other things as well. Uh, so instead of linking to an element, we can also link to services, uh, to other views, to be able to drill down uh, to another site or to uh, other elements. We can also link to uh, URLs, uh, allowing you to show a, a web page embedded inside the graphical presentation, or with a click of a button, uh, it opens up in a new tab page. So we can add buttons on there, uh, like you see a couple of buttons uh, over there as well. We can also link to generic files, uh, documentation, but also command lines. Uh, so if you want to have a button that immediately opens up documentation or a button that opens up a telnet uh, or an RDP session or something like that, you can also link to those things. And probably a very popular uh, one is then the automation scripts, of course, um, because there the real power comes into play. Um, you just have a nice overview, a nice and easy button to switch from a main to a backup, uh, to start something, uh, to stop something. Uh, and what basically happens, you click on the button and a complete automation script is being executed to configure everything. So you configure one time or you create one time an automation script, you put it behind the button and you have a very easy user interface with just one click of a button, you can do a whole series of actions. Um, there's also a possibility to link to multiple sets. Well, uh, I'll still need to show you a little bit more about that multiple set later on as well. Now we can also enrich it with some uh, thumbnails. Uh, we have two types of thumbnails uh, that uh, I'm showing here. That's first of all the spectrum thumbnail. Uh, so if you have spectrum analyzers continuously monitoring a certain signal, we can uh, show the buffer there with the time as well when it was taken. So you can immediately see like, okay, the, is this signal feed uh, still okay coming in uh, with some confidence monitoring on that spectrum thumbnail there? or uh, the confidence monitoring with the video thumbnails here that we have uh, available with, for instance, a main and a backup that is uh, being shown live in that uh, visual overview here. So that really uh, is a nice feature to add to your visual graphics there. You can also zoom with the visual overview, uh, just use the scroll wheel. There's also some keyboard, keyboard uh, combinations there as well. And you can then of course click and drag around. Um, so uh, if you have touch screen, you can use uh, pinch to zoom. Uh, so you can play around with that feature. Um, the graphing possibilities allow you to add some bar graphs, some pie charts or stacked graphs as well. Um, showing you certain information, a comparison between uh, different values of different devices or within a table. So we can take data from different data sources and make it a little bit more visual into your uh, graphical presentation as well. Um, also drag and drop is uh, available. Um, so you can intuitively uh, take a device and just drag and drop it onto another uh, source or destination um, to set up a connection. What, we hap what happens behind the scenes that is that an automation script will be executed with the selected object where you dropped it on. Uh, so it, it knows the arguments, you could say, uh, to be able to make that and configure that connection inside your network with the automation scripting. So simple drag and drop, and it does all the actions for you. There's also a possibility to have a kind of like a details panel where you take and drag and drop something onto a details panel to see more uh, metrics and details of that uh, selected device. Not only with uh, drag and drop you can do it, but also with uh, just moving your mouse uh, on top of the item. And that could be interesting because uh, you could say like, okay, just show everything. But uh, if you have, uh, let's say like a uh, map overview with a lot of different sites on there, you cannot show all the metrics for all the different little dots on the map. Uh, so what you can do, you can have a site panel showing the details. You just move your mouse over a certain site and you will see the details uh, popping up in the site panel. So that's where it comes in handy. 
Um, there's one uh, user, user setting that I want to mention uh, in the uh, visual overview module, and that is the following. Uh, so you can find it in the visual overview uh, settings section. Uh, it is named enable coloring when severity is normal or undefined might sound complicated but actually it's not really complicated by default the coloring is enabled when the severity is normal or undefined what is normal that is green like the baseball switch on the right hand side what is undefined we don't know the alarm there's no alarming defined no alarm templates uh, configured so it's gray so that's the default what i will see in my visual overview uh, the green items and the gray items whenever they are linked to a green element and a gray element or an undefined element and a normal element if i would disable this option then i would see this and it basically shows me in this case white because the visual uh, the microsoft visio drawing is effectively designed in white if it would be in orange or pink or whatever, it would just show the colors of the native Visio drawing you used it in. Uh, sometimes you can enable that option to just uh, remove all the too much green on my screen and uh, too much gray on my screen. Uh, I'll show you an example uh, immediately later on. Uh, there's here an indication also purple uh, you might remember from one of the previous videos that uh, purple is being used for masked uh, so that's just a side note here all right a couple of examples and then i'll show you some examples uh, in the demo as well a couple of screenshots here um, we have an earth station uh, here we can go to one of the earth stations see some more details there some uh, real-time parameters so we can immediately see the state uh, so that's a nice uh, overview of more um, map view or a more logical uh, overview that's the one i mentioned for the enable coloring or uh, when severity is normal or undefined all those items in the rack overview here are linked to actual devices and by default they would all be in the flashy green or gray um, but i disable that so everything is uh, nicely shown in the default colors from the visio drawing except if it goes into alarm this one went into alarm so this one is actually uh, indicated in the critical red color you could also do it uh, the, uh, another way and for instance have a line in front of every um, uh, device here or maybe a line on top of it or something uh, that is not filling the complete um, front panel you could say um, this is a map overview again a floor plan uh, more specifically with some environmentals uh, here we have different sites or uh, cities with the different uh, services in there so you can immediately see if it's more a location problem or if it's more a service oriented problem uh, in this kind of grid uh, view um, a nice thing to add here is that in this floor plan you can uh, actually see also uh, the person that last entered that room and the timestamp that is because we integrated the security batch system and we are reading out those log entries and we can actually say like okay this person just entered that room so if something goes wrong there uh, you might want to contact that person first uh, if he may be uh, unplugged something or uh, did something uh, uh, reconfigured something there uh, cable uh, amplifiers uh, spectrum thumbnails being added here modular chassis so you can add in pictures of course in uh, microsoft visio um, digital tv uh, receivers here the nice thing here to uh, uh, show you is that we have at the bottom here a number of displays those are actual physical displays in the network operation center and you can uh, select a specific service and what will happen is that the automation scripts will reconfigure uh, the ASI and Ethernet switches to take the signal from the different points in the network and to bring it onto the displays there. So if you have a problem with a channel, you can immediately pull it up and see at which stage in your network the problem is starting to occur there. With some recordings, you can also uh, trigger from here satellite reception redundancy group three uh, main receivers one backup um, here the designer chose to have like a pink or purple border for the action buttons to switch from a main to a backup 
Um, a lot of real-time parameters, um, very uh, functional, uh, you could say. Ah, yeah, and the switch is effectively going to uh, switch and change as well to the backup. Um, here an overview, um, more external in the NOC facilities, a nice overview so that you can see again if it's on the main or the backup and at which stage uh, there is an alarm. Different transport streams in uh, a digital TV environment with the utilization and the different services in there for all of them here. So one uh, top level view uh, showing me a nice overview. Different satellites different, with all the services on there. Again, a nice top level overview to have in one blink of an eye an overview. If you go to one specific uh, channel then, uh, it's not the most fancy drawing you could say, but it's a very functional one because I can in one blink of an eye see a complete overview uh, uh, over ASI, ATM ASI, over satellite with uh, different uh, points uh, where real-time uh, measurements are being done. So I can see if something is wrong with this channel at which at which state uh, is or which stage uh, it is happening uh, in the blink of an eye. Uh, a little bit similar to the physical uh, monitors I had in the My Network Operations Center a few uh, screenshots back. Uh, this one is the same in an IPTV environment, but uh, the display is not physical, but it's a video thumbnail inside the graphic here. Uh, so we added the video thumbnails here. We can select a channel again uh, from a full list and it will uh, take the channel from the different stages and the network again, and it will bring it into the video thumbnails. The nice thing is that uh, here you can also have the audio and you can actually see that in the last one, the audio uh, drops out. So somewhere here, uh, the audio got lost uh, for that channel. Nice example of an overview. Um, here again, a service uh, with some real-time parameters, uh, a main, a backup path, a nice overview. If something goes wrong, you can immediately pinpoint the problem there. Uh, again, a nice overview of a, a service. Um, it goes uh, all the way back and has some continuation here, main backup uh, overviews, uh, etc. In this case, the customer also integrated a, a setup box on different locations uh, in his network. So from, uh, from behind his desk at anywhere, uh, he can just pull up a drawing like this from a remote um, station and he can control the setup box by actually clicking on the buttons here. So you can actually click on the buttons and it will send a command to the setup box and display the outputs coming out of the setup box. So it allows him to remotely just, uh, for instance, go to the home and uh, check if the uh, video on demand is maybe still working on different uh, locations throughout the country um, because this is installed multiple times throughout the country. A nice example, um, here uh, the setup is a little bit visualized with the setup box and the output of the video thumbnail. Uh, mosaic with the configuration behind it as well. So lots of nice uh, examples. Uh, let me also uh, show you a couple of the examples uh, in our system we have here. So the demo uh, DMA uh, I have been uh, using already a couple of times, demo.skyline.be. So you could have more like tiles to go to certain sections as a top level view, or you could more have like a world map where you can uh, drill down into a certain region. Note, maybe go back, or I have it there as well. Um, there's also a small plus, uh, and the plus uh, also shows me some more statistics. That's uh, an, a separate uh, tab page of the Visio uh, being shown in the tooltip. Uh, that is... Uh, Another feature in there, we have lots of uh, goodies in there uh, to really make some nice compelling interfaces. Uh, so you can really um, click to do certain actions or to uh, switch to a backup or switch uh, another site. Uh, so you can uh, visualize uh, the SLA, for instance, we already breached uh, because our availability is very low. Uh, we've been playing a little bit too much uh, with this setup here. It's not a live one, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, it's for demo purposes here. So um, you really have uh, nice graphical ways of uh, representing your system. 
Now uh, to wrap it up, I also want to show you this uh, drawing on uh, dcpdma.skyline.be. So this is available uh, on the internet for you. Uh, the, uh, underneath the root you have uh, what I call the mother of all visuals, where you basically have all the possible uh, linking or almost all the possible linking uh, and uh, features we have in Visio. So you can link to an element, a view, a service with real-time parameters. Uh, the parameters can be uh, do some kind of show hide and flip uh, things. Uh, alarming information can be shown, uh, executing uh, automation scripts and executables. We can add thumbnails in there as well. Our video is not online. Um, a link to a web page or an embedded web page. Uh, we can visualize uh, matrices uh, in several ways, make sums of parameters, show trend graphs inside uh, my um, visual overview. So all kinds of uh, different possibilities. So that's all a lot of data that I can show uh, with properties, uh, also positioning uh, uh, of items, or let me show maybe also some iteration, uh, some controls, that's what I wanted to show as well. So we can add in real-time parameters as well, uh, so that you can easily change it in here uh, as well. So controls are available in there. Uh, ch uh, pie charts, uh, bar graphs that have, I uh, have mentioned in the slides as well, uh, even a stacked graph uh, as well. So there's a lot of uh, different uh, possibilities that we can do in here. Uh, too much to show, but uh, you see that there are a lot of possibilities uh, inside our uh, visual overview. Uh, so it is a very powerful uh, module, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, because it has a lot of features and those features are really needed to make a good representation of your system so that you can, in a natural way, uh, easily navigate through your system and have easy operations by just clicking some simple buttons, uh, see whether your signal is going through a main or a backup in a visual way, click on a button, it executes an automation script, all fully uh, graphical. So that visual overview is a really powerful interface as I mentioned. Next is the element overview module that we will cover. See you in the next one.